Hi, Julia Watts here. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. So today we're going to um, create a card using some fairy hugs, uh, papers, um, some of the dies and some of the stamps as well. So we're going to create a scene. So to start with, I've selected a paper from the Winklebush paper pad. Now these are, um, there's uh, currently seven paper pads in the Fairy Hugs range and um, they're all six by six. There's 24 double sided sheets, 24 designs, two of each and they're 216 GSM. So really, really good weight. I mean, I've used some of mine. So Winklebush has got, um, you see it's got like a, a netted kind of texture to it. Um, lots and lots of different colours. It's a really good base for you to start with. And there's some that are more mottled. Um, these go really well with, um, say, Gianna, the flower fairy that's sitting on the water lily. Um, so, yeah, you've got lots and lots. I mean, look at that. Tremendous backgrounds to start on. Um, but the, the difficult decision is deciding which side to use. But because there are 24 sheets, two of each, you can just use one of each design if you want to. And uh, the, all the products I'm using are available on my website, juliawattscrafts.co.uk, for shipping to UK addresses. You can also find them on fairyhugs.com. So this is Winklebush, and I've selected this one. And the other side of this one is, is kind of blues. But because we're going for kind of a forest scene, because I'm going to be using the Enchanted Dyes, the Forest Binds. Um, they don't come on a magnetic sheet, by the way, um, but obviously it means it's good for me to store them that way. So we're going to work on this. <clears throat> so the idea is, and this one, one has been cut from um, Sentiment of Yours um, premium cardstock. It's, I can't remember the name of it. It's one of the browns that we've got. And the idea, because obviously you can have it up that way if you want to, or say this way, and you can have it, you know, you can have the, perhaps the gnome door in there, you can have a wall in there, you could have the uh, cottage, uh, country, uh, uh, the cottage that's in the die set um, you can have loads and loads of things with it and create a scene you can even use it like uh, kelp um, yeah, so for your underwater scenes as well but I thought it'd be interesting to have it going um, let's have it this way up to have it going across the page and we're going to use with it the fairy swing so we're going to have the swing coming down from there so the fairies are obviously playing in there so but to begin with what we're going to do is go to our stamping platform and i'm going to use a few stamps on this and we're going to stamp ourselves a moon so it's a good idea to have your um die cut already cut out so then you can plan where you want your stamps around it so I'm going to be using the Spooky Moons set, which was from the Halloween collection um, in uh, 2021. And this one contains, it's got, there's two sizes and you've got a solid and um, a sort of a detailed moon on each side as well. So you can use them together or you can use them separately. So we're going to go for the larger one. We're going to make ourselves a moon. So I'm happy to have the moon coming sort of out of the foliage, if you like. So that's where I'm going to have the foliage. Then I want the moon coming below it. So, oh, so don't move it. It looks like there's a monster or something in the moon. Very spooky. So let's have it like so. And I've moved it again. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't move your moon once you've planned where you want it. Right, stop. And we're going to stamp it in Morning Miss First Fine Claire. First Fine Claire's are, this is the grey one. First Fine Claire's are definitely the go-to for um, all stamping, really. But especially for silhouette style stamping. Which is, this is. And this paper is kind of semi-coated. So it means that um, nine times out of ten, you only have to stamp things once, uh, once you're, you know, once you've used your stamp a few times. Let it lift off, 
and then you've got your spooky moon. Good to go straight away, no problem. Just dry off the ink a little bit. That's about as much cleaning as these stamps get from me. Sorry if I'm shaking the desk a bit. Just put this away. I've shown this a few times. Store my stamps. I just cut off the hangy bit, write what number it is and the title of it, and then I can just pop it back in there. And I've got some boxes with different size stamps in, and I can just flick through and easily see which ones I want, which helps. So then we we'll bring in the fairy swing, and again, oh, the dies got caught in my verse fine clear. Right, so we bring that in and we know that we're going to have our die just there. And so we want to figure out where we're going to have the swing coming in. Because these, this is quite long and thin, it does need to kind of be moved around a bit. Let's pick that up just there. Oops. And we can take the die off fiddle around and try and get that separate. Okay, so let's just have a look. So we don't want to stamp all the bottom bits fine by the looks of it. But we don't want to stamp all the top. So we only want to ink up to about there on the top bit. And we're going to go for our black. Nocturne verse Vine Claire. Let's hope I don't forget that I don't want to ink it all, which is always a danger with me. Oh, sorry about my stomach. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> Sound effects. <laughs> <coughs> and there's the cough. Sorry about this. You can always turn the sound off. <laughs> Let's see how this is stamped. A little bit more there. I think I need a little bit more ink just on that inside bit there. That's better. Okay. Looks a bit strange, doesn't it? Just floating in midair. But don't forget, we're going to put our forest vines die cut over the top. And this is mixed media. We do it all the time and we don't realise. And I think we think we're, we're quite scared by the term mixed media. But, you know, whenever you're using two different mediums, so we're actually using paper, we're using um, dies and we're using stamps. So we are mixing our media. So that's going to go... On there like that see how it works brilliant then we're going to bring in one of the fairies now there's a few different things you can have obviously have sitting on the tree and there is actually a fairy that um is made to sit on the swings but her name escapes me at the moment but this is tara and Tara's going to sit just there like so now obviously if you wanted i mean i'm not i'm thinking that her wings are a bit transparent anyway so we would see a little bit of the um the fairy swing um um what do you call them ropes um anyway so I'm not too worried about that, um, but you might be, in which case you can always cut the wings out again and put them on top, or you could have stamped her first, then masked her, and then put the swing around her. So there's lots of different ways that you can do it. Now, because I've done the swing in black, I'm going to actually stamp Tara in black too. And I might need to stamp her twice, just because she's sitting on that swing and I don't want that swing to be dominant or the the um, wooden part to be dominant I want her to be dominant so we just see how she how she looks she looks pretty good but we are going to go again I think she's a little bit high 
but that's fine. She's got wings. <laughs> that's the thing with fairies, you can get away with all sorts because they've got wings. So if it's not perfect, they've got wings, it's fine. So that's Tara. Put Tara away. Then we're going to bring in something from da for down below. And we're looking at the um, slanted tree now. So we're going to use that. This again is from the Halloween collection. But don't think of these collections it's like some of the Christmas collection. Don't think of them as necessarily just being for that time of year. I can get away with that still staying there. <coughs> so obviously this, this could be used that way up if you wanted it to. So it could be a quite a spooky little tree, but obviously it's meant to be on its side because it's got little mushrooms and things growing up there. So we're going to have that just down below here. In fact, I do need to move it slightly. I don't want her foot to be in the way. Okay. Oh. And then bring in the magnets. So that it doesn't move. So I have 97 million of them on there because I like my magnets. And we're going to stamp this in a brown and we're going to go for Acorn versus Fine Claire. This is a great tree actually. Great for foliage. You could just use the tops of the branches just to edge your card. Fairy Hook's Halloween collection last year was absolutely amazing. Just absolutely brilliant. I don't normally do Halloween, but I thoroughly enjoyed using them. There's our slanted tree. I do sell these um, papers, by the way, for your press to impress. <clears throat> which means that you can keep your um, your foam um, nice and clean. Uh, right, so we do need a sentiment in here. Put it back over there a minute. So I've got a few that I could use. I've got a couple actually that I've got out. Every day is an amazing adventure, which I think really fits really well because obviously she's on the swing, she's having a wonderful time and she thinks that's absolutely brilliant. So we can have that one. I was wondering whether to use Listen, which says, uh, there is always music among the trees in the garden, but our hearts must be very quiet to hear it. So that's, that's a really nice one, but I'm gonna use that one because I really like that. And I was thinking that I might want to bring in um, an animal or two but that one's not going to fit these are squirrels that one might fit but then i need to make sure that i bring my sentiment up or we could just have him the little one on there or we could bring some caterpillars in because we've got mini caterpillars as well so we could have have these and bring these on we can have a few of those maybe. Let's do the caterpillars. Options. It's nice to have options. Right, so let's get this, uh, this sentiment on first. And we'll have it slightly to the side, I think. See if we can get it straight. I think it is. We do that in black. So it's nice and prominent, black nocturne. You see, I'm very heavy handed with my ink. <clears throat> These are photopolymer stamps, they're not acrylic, so they're very good quality stamps. Um, my very, very first fairy hook stamps, and then I've been using them for nearly two years now, are still as good as the day I had them. How crisp that is like I say these papers they are absolutely fantastic 
and then we bring in our little um, our little caterpillar. We'll have a solid one, I think. We just have one looking at her. We could bring in a few, but we just have one. And I think we're going to do him in black because because we've got the um, slanted tree in brown. We do him in black and then we can make sure that he's nice and solid and that the brown won't show through. So like I say, once they're dirty, you can see exactly where they're going. You might not always get it right, but um, you pretty much will. In fact, I don't think he needs any more ink. I think he's good. So let's leave him at that. So that's our little scene. So all we need to do now is grab our take it out of here and we grab our die cut to complete the scene so she's not floating in midair. So that's going to go on there like so. So immediately you put that on there, it transforms it and it becomes a complete scene. So let's glue this down in place. Again, I'm going to use my Sentimentally Yours PVA. We won't worry about the fact that we've got mushrooms growing sideways. Won't stress about that. Obviously, you could um, cut this out of a double-sided adhesive sheet with your card on it. And if you're doing that, I would suggest you use the Elizabeth Craft Designs one because it is very, very good. And then you don't have to do any gluing. You do, however, have to poke out all the excess bits of um, double-sided adhesive sheet from your die. So it's kind of swings and roundabouts, really. I think that's enough glue. I'm just going to get a piece of Mickey kitchen roll and pop that on there for a second. And clean that off. And then we're going to pop this. That just gets rid of a bit of the excess. And then we're going to pop this hopefully in the right place. Need to catch that swing. It's floating in midair a little bit, so obviously I couldn't see that properly. So what we'll do is we will get a Pigma Micron pen. And we'll just extend that just into there like that, so nobody would know. Give it a good press from behind. And then, obviously I would do probably do a little bit of colouring in, but you can always do that after, you don't have to do that as and when. Go around the edge with a bit of twisted citron. Barely see it, but it is there. Okay, in fact, let's just do a little bit of colouring in so we can see what it'll look like. So what I would do is um, <clears throat> grab a brown. Um, this is from the Sentimentally Yours Watercolour Blending Brush Pens. Ignore the fact that it says uh, set four because I've, I've sorted all mine into colour order. So we grab a brown and let's have a look. See what sort of brown we're grabbing. That one's okay. And I would actually go over, just because I like to, I want to... I want it to blend in nicely. Go over the top of the slanted tree. And 
this is just really quick just to show you and the the card does take this really really well and you can uh, and you can um you can use your pencils as well um i haven't done but um i suggest you can use either coconut oil um the kind of more solidy one uh, Lou uses that, Lou Withers, um, or you can use um, Dorso oil apparently to get it to move around a bit and blend a bit. And that, that's something for me to try as well. Okay, so a little bit more brown in there and also on the bench as well that she's sitting on. Just to fill in that area there. finishes that off and then the other bit of colour would be to her wings so obviously it's up to you as to what colour wings to try um, we'll just go with the, um, the pens that we've got in front of me oh fluorescent orange god you're gonna see her coming aren't you wow there are a few fluorescents in this set actually um, there's a yellow a pink and um, the orange I mean, she would be quite, quite flamboyant, wouldn't she, really? Let's go for this one. Let's have a look at that one. That's more of an orange. That's fine. So we just add a little bit of extra here. It just makes a difference when you just add a little bit of colour to your C. And then we'll pop it onto a piece of black card. And the, the paper does take the PVA really, really well. Obviously, you know, don't put loads on. It's always less is more anyway with a, a good wet glue, as this is. And mat it onto a piece of black card. Keep it straight-ish. And then we can put it, I've actually got a card blank to put this one on. You really don't need much glue at all. Don't forget you can get the products available on my website, juliawattscrafts.co.uk and also from um, fairyhogs.com. Obviously you can't get the watercolour blending brush pens from um, fairy hugs um, but you can get everything else okay so there we go finished I do have another one as well which I did before which is um, the one that I was going to demonstrate on TV so this is a TV demo so this one is I've rounded the corners of the card blank and it's a slightly different color um, but again it's from Winklebush and I've got um, one of the other caterpillars that I've coloured in uh, on here so um, two almost identical but different cards using a selection of stamps and um, the forest vines dies and the Winklebush paper from Fairy Hugs do check out um, my other videos um, there's lots and lots of Fairy Hug videos on my YouTube channel and it'd be wonderful if you could like and subscribe as well it'd be absolutely fantastic i am doing lives on Monday and sundays at 11 a.m uh, at the moment as, as much as i can and uh, so thank you very much for watching and hopefully i'll see you soon bye